I'm Adam Handling and this is the Great British Chef's Signature Series. So this is one of the most flavoursome dishes that I have and all it is is beef and onions but done my way. I was proper inspired by how they think of food in Japan, in Thailand, in Vietnam. So sweet, sour, bitter, savoury umami are a huge, huge factor. Kimchi is one of my store ingredients because it adds a hell of a lot of umami to anything. The one thing I love about Wagyu is the fat content. It's so tender, it's so meaty, it's so juicy, it's so fatty. It's everything I love, really. This dish is one of my favourites. It's beef and onions. But instead of just normal beef and normal onions, we use Wagyu beef. I'm lucky enough to be able to use it in my restaurants, but if you can't, just get a piece of meat that is super fatty, because fat is flavour. A fillet, yeah, sure, it does a purpose, but it doesn't have that robust, delicious flavour than anything with fat would. So this is from the part of the ribeye uh, from the Wagyu. So with this meat, I'm going to season it with a bit of salt, both sides, and black pepper. Really invest in a, in a pepper mill. It contains a lot of oil, so if you have ground pepper sitting in your cupboard or in your little spice rack for about two years, don't use it, just put it in the bin, get yourself a pepper mill and crack it fresh. So inside here, we have rendered Wagyu fat with a little touch of kimchi. Kimchi is one of my st store ingredients because it adds a hell of a lot of umami to anything. And we're just gonna put a little bit of the fat in a frying pan, but I'm lucky to have a plancher. Melt it. So this isn't a pan, it's a plancher. If you have a pan, which I do in my house, you need to make sure that thing's almost on fire. You really, and that's why it's really good to use animal fat rather than oil, because oil will set on fire. Animal fat, you can really crank the heat up. You want to sear it for about a minute and a half, and then a minute and a half on the other, then you want to rest it, and then put it back on the heat and do it again. If you hit it too hard with the heat, you're just going to overcook the outside, and the inside is just going to get attacked and just be completely overcooked. So all that caramelization on the meat that you can literally hear it and feel it, that's flavor. So the sides, you want to seal them as well so that the blood stays inside of the meat and keeps it moist. And all I'm going to do is put it back on the tray and I'm going to put it there to rest. So the first part I'm going to do is I'm going to get the sauce ready, which is beef sauce using the bones. It's a, lot, it's a long process to make, but it's well worth it. So this is a base of beef, chicken, and veal inside of it. And then with the sauce, I've got lots of diced ox tongue. So beef tongue inside of the sauce, which has a really nice corn beefy sort of taste. So with the sauce, I'm just gonna put it on the heat, just to warm up. If you don't have that length of time to make a sauce, it won't be as impactful, but it's easy to achieve something similar. So, you know, you've got beef bones for you can get from a butcher, chicken wings, roast them off in, um, in an oven, then pat them dry. And then just get some chicken stock and beef stock, fill it up loads and loads and loads, and then really reduce that right down. Then pass the sauce, and then you add your uh, aromats, and you get all the oils from the aromats to be far cleaner than at the beginning. And now I have a little onion that has been slow cooked in beef fat. Then I've just scooped out the inside of the onion to make it hollow. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to add beef cheek that I've just braised in beef stock and then I'm just going to stuff it inside it and I'm just going to force as much in as I possibly can. You're going to break the onion a little bit but you can always hide that. The idea is fill the onion full of the ox cheek so it's really meaty. It also means you have a stunning shape of an onion. So now that that's stuffed and it's really quite full. I'm going to pop it into a pot that has a little bit of the sauce in, and I'm just going to glaze it up so it's absolutely stunning. Then I'm gonna put it in the oven for a couple of minutes just to make sure it's really hot. The reason I'm glazing it is because I want that sticky flavor to go down. There's nothing better than a braised beef cheek, really sticky and maximum full of flavor. So like I said, the ox tongue is very much like a corn beefy taste. It's delicious, really lovely. And we do some slices that we then roll in the dish. And all the scraps and the bits that we would normally throw away because it doesn't look pretty, we dice it up and put it in the sauce. We have some little onions that have been slow cooked again in beef fat. And then I have a puree using all the parts of the inside of the onions, because remember I scoop all them out and I slow cook them with a little bit of beef fat and then I blend it with Parmesan. So I'm just gonna warm this up very slowly. 
So the onion is nicely glazed. We're just gonna leave that for a second. The meat, much more softer now than what it was after I sealed it because the meat's relaxed. Imagine someone punching you in the arm, you tighten up really quite firm. And then after a while, you, you start to feel your arm again. It's exactly the same with meat, so it's super important to rest it. Now I'm gonna put it back on the heat and cook it again. So the onion, very sticky. Fresh thyme leaves. You wanna use a lot of herbs towards the end, so you can really keep the aromat and the oils of the actual herbs itself. So again, I keep my food super simple in terms of presentation. So, spoon of the puree. It's nice and thick. Try and keep it as natural as possible. So you have your onion, and then a cup, and then the rolled tongue. For me, the tongue is like that corned beef that you get in a tin, which people say is just terrible, but it's absolutely bloody delicious. And it's just a bit of, it's respectful as well, because now we're utilizing the whole of the animal. So now we have the meat. I always just cut a little bit off so I can taste it. It's cooked perfect. And then cut it in the middle. It's nicely pink. So now the meat on the plate. And you can see the amount of fat content that's inside of here that it's gonna be a tasty piece of meat. I get excited more eating this dish than I do plating it. <laughs> My food is very, very uh, natural looking, I like to think. So I'm putting a little bit of fennel pollen on there. So the aniseed flavor, just to really wake the dish up. Inside here, there's some wood sorrel as well. So it's the citric notes and mustard frills, which is a little bit of the spicy. And then it gets finished with the sauce, which is rich and delish. So this is one of the most flavorsome dishes that I have on my menu in Covent Garden. And all it is is beef and onions, but done my way. Enjoy.